nights, karma bites, new days, new nights, take, take action, seek sight, we are gonna win this fight, I'll die for the wrongs to get right, and you better believe that everybody's gonna be alright, dancing with lightning, for some may seem frightening, we find out, exciting, hi everybody, hi Peter, Peter Trong told us that he too is a victim, indoctrinated by members of the Man of Network when he was 16. Uh, their philosophy was that, um, that children are beings and that it's not wrong for adult, adult men to have sex with and, and to have relationships with young boys. And um, did you accept they, that? Did you agree? I did. I did. Um, they were very convincing. To be honest with you, you know, they, they, they pointed me to different psychological studies, different books, um, different articles, and, and they even pointed me to history. You know, I said, oh, this happened in history. It's the right thing. It's, it's not bad. It's, it's what they want. It's good for them. And, and this was drummed into my head. Um, and eventually they had me go out and start helping them find victims and, and find you know, certain types of material such as childhood to satisfy them. And that's why he said he was sorry. I'm locked up with a lot of predators here who have gone out and and done a lot of very bad things to children, and that's that's just not me. You know, I'm I'm not a predator. I'm I'm, I'm not a, de a deviant person by nature, as such. Peter, you say you're not a deviant, but we understand that you began to co commit sexual acts with your son when he was very young, and no, we can't go into that. We're not going into that. Can we, can I can I ask you then, Peter, about you know how that happened? How that happened with your partner? No, we're not. Going, we're not going into that either. Do you want to say anything? Uh, because you've said you're sorry. Do Do you want to explain how that he happened? If you were led innocent. to that? No, Angel. This is making me really uncomfortable. Yeah, I know that. That's why we're not doing it. We're not gonna. We're not. We're not going. It, it, they're coming out. It, it, they're really. Uh, it sounds like they're just trying to plaster me as a monster, and I. I, I don't want this. That's fine. Okay, so, so that's fine. You can hang up. You can hang up. And okay, I'm going to hang up. up. I'm going to go. Okay. Over. This story is about a baby we will call Adam. His horrific introduction to the insidious world. Dated back to 2005 when his Russian mother sold him for only 8000 to a member of Lovers, a sophisticated global network of men preferences are boys aged between 2 and 10 years old. Adam, at just 5 days old, was bought by two gay men named Mark Newton and Peter Tarong. His birth certificate was falsified, showing Mark Newton as his surrogate father. He was bought for only one reason, and it wasn't because Peter and Mark wanted to truly be fathers. Well, I feel like you guys have figured out that this story heads down a dark road. So this is my time to say viewer discretion is advised. And because this case was so graphic, I didn't even bother trying to get it monetized. And I'm even hoping that it doesn't get me kicked off YouTube because YouTube doesn't like to discuss this subject. And therefore, I'm going to have to take out some words of this story. So I apologize and hopefully you guys can kind of figure out where I'm going with this story, I just don't want to completely get kicked off of YouTube. You know, they have rules about certain words. We have to be careful or I'm going to be gone. So if y'all don't see me again, then YouTube has axed me. Okay, let's try this one. Nobody else has tried to discuss it, so we'll see how it goes. Hello, my name is Holly and welcome to The Murder She Shed. Hit the subscribe button before you leave if you would like to keep up with all my rarely told true crime cases. If you guys are like me and get tired of hearing every channel repeat the same cases, that is not my channel. I try to find cases that others shy away from because these victims need their stories told too. Like this little boy in this story named Adam. Not really his real name, it's a pseudonym. So we can protect the child. You'll see why in a bit. So come join us usually twice weekly, right from my she shed. As a nine-year-old boy, Peter Tarong was essayed by a relative. The relative had taught Peter the essay of young boys was not wrong. Peter felt like this was true since he received no attention from his parents, and the only attention he received was a messed up kind of love. 
He believed that essaying young boys made them happy. Peter's parents were Vietnam refugees that had come to Australia when Peter was only two years old. When Peter was 14, his parents bought him a computer. Online, he found the man at work. At 14, he began to be groomed by men online. By 18, he went to America to live with a man named Robert Rouvet. Robert Rouvet introduced Peter to his friend Mark Newton, and they began a sexual relationship too. Peter and Mark began to travel the world together as photographers, a front for what they actually were. And I wouldn't consider them photographers. There are a series of photographs with boys in Europe, Asia, and America. They would visit orphanage. There are photos of boys playing in sport matches, at swimming pools, in playgrounds, and often in private modeling sessions. Mark was into young boys, so Peter decided to join Mark and making young boys happy because Mark liked it. Peter said that he wasn't particularly attracted to boys, but Peter was very attracted to Mark And so he decided to do whatever Mark wanted him to in order to please him. In 2002, they began looking for a child to adopt. It took them three years, but in 2005, when Peter turned 28, they adopted a little boy. Australian authorities initially refused to grant the child a visa. Then upon their arrival in Australia, before letting them through customs, they quizzed them for hours. Eventually, the couple lived in North Queensland, Australia with their young son. On July 14, 2010, when Adam was five years old, ABC Far North Queensland broadcast a story titled, Two Dads Are Better Than One. They proudly brought the couple on their show and interviewed the two men about their relationship and adoption. Playing with the boy and his pet baby chickens in the backyard. Have you fed them this morning? No. Oh, here's one. One's harder to get. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, do you know what this chicken's name is? Uh, no. I haven't figured out the name. <laughs> I don't think he's named him yet. I'm going to call them, uh, Chick Dasty. I felt no sense that anything was wrong. For all intents and purposes, this appeared to be a loving family and a loving household. And I've gone over and over it in my brain and I just did not feel that anything was wrong. I gave up my career and my job and uh, went to Russia to oversee the process. Uh, so we're obviously, we're very dedicated to making this work. Our budget was anything that we earned, anything that we had saved, and anything that we could borrow to make this happen. And why was it your sperm that was used, not Pete's, Mark? Flip of the coin, I think. <laughs> we, we'd gone back and forth several times. I'm profoundly shocked and disgusted by what's happened since then. I just am revolted and I find myself quite despairing about the turn of events. The couple could put on a great front for other people, but behind the scenes, they were essaying Adam and selling him to other men. They would use Skype and the photo sharing service Flickr to sell him to other pedos. They started essaying Adam by the time he was two weeks old. Two weeks old, guys. At that age, before they had even left Russia, a video was made of Mark performing an act on the tiny baby. Adam had been adopted for the sole purpose of exploitation. So by the time he was 22 months old, they began traveling the world in order to film other men essaying their little boy and uploading the footage to the lover network. By the time Adam was three years old, His passport was already full. The pair brainwashed Adam to believe the essay was normal. Mark also trained Adam to deny any inappropriate behavior if he's ever questioned by authorities. Peter and Mark were a part of an international ring, and it was because of this ring they were caught. It was the trafficking of materials to the individuals in the ring that alerted United States Postal Service inspectors and investigators in Indiana to the case launching a two-year investigation into the men. The network was called the Tale of the Dragon, and at the time it was discovered by authorities in 2011, it had a 20 core member located around the world, including in the UK, Lebanon, the US, and Mexico. Mark and Peter's secret life began to unravel at a New Zealand home in August of 2011, when a fan of the work, Craig Edward Broadley, a house painter and fellow defender, was arrested with computer drives containing happy snaps of Adam and his parents, among images of exploitation. 
To the untrained eye, the pictures depicted a family outing. Happy family. To a network of veteran detectives, the snaps triggered grave concern. There is a network of investigators across the world who do this on a daily basis. The images were not what you would see as a traditional family snap. The pictures were kind of a modeling shot that looked and felt weird to the detectives. The first images we came across uh, were of him on a hill above uh, Wellington Airport. The images showed him uh, posing, uh, quite contrived poses, uh, staring directly into camera, uh, lying back, hand behind his head. My concern is whether or not the parents of this boy knew that these types of photos had been taken and, and what else was going on behind the camera. So it didn't cross your mind at this stage that this boy's parents were in on it? No, certainly not. Craig Broadley also had videos of an adventure exploring underground caves. Describe to me what's happening in those videos. What are you hearing and seeing? Well, I'm, I'm seeing a young boy. How old? Six or seven. Got protective gloves on. They're walking through some pretty hardcore looking caves. It's, it's you know, three, three adults and a young boy just exploring some caves. Where? Well, at, at that point I had no idea. Oh, good boy, look at you, huh? <laughs> hey, up we go. Oh, look at that. Back up. Fun. Back towards Carpenteria. To John Peacock, they weren't just innocent travel videos. We'll see how we go, eh? Hey? Let's go. All had concealed their identities in the images using multiple screen names and aliases. There was an Australian in the group, an early member using the alias Red Rover. This person was Peter Tarong, the child's father. Peter's link to the Tale of the Dragon was revealed following a chance discovery by Brian Bone, an inspector with the United States Postal Inspection Service based in Washington, D.C. In mid-2011, Inspector Bone raided the home of a man in Idaho, suspected 38-year-old child Don Casper. Inspector Bone discovered a spindle of DVDs hidden in a crawl space inside Casper's home, showing Casper essaying multiple children. The footage was secretly recorded by Casper and uploaded to the internet for like-minded men to watch and collect. Weirdos. Pedos. Disgusting men. Ugh. So sickening. During the police interview, Casper revealed he was a member of a secret internet relay chat group called Tell the Dragon and began providing inspectors with several names behind the aliases. The key that unlocked the conspiracy and led to the discovery of Adam was a visual clue contained in a private folder of another Tell of the Dragon member, 44-year-old Thomas Fawn in Anderson, Indiana. Inside a folder called Prive B were images of a young boy about five years old being essayed by an adult male, but their faces had been cropped out. Investigators had no idea who the offender was nor the young boy. The only visual clue to go on, the boy had a henna tattoo on his chest and a mole on his stomach. Eventually, these images would be matched with family videos and photos obtained by Task Force Argos at Queensland Police and identified as Adam. It's a long day. Look what I made. Isn't that lovely? Very nice. Hi, dragon. A video of an outing in San Francisco with two unidentified American men. Aren't <laughs> they beautiful? They're so good, aren't they? <laughs> Oh no. Daddy! Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. 
The players in this ring began to be exposed one by one, including Mark and Peter. While they were on a trip to LA, police raided their home in Australia. The police raids in North Queensland uncovered a significant volume of material, but it was encrypted and Argos investigators did not have the passphrases to unlock it. Using the material that was not encrypted, the task force victim identification team spent months piecing together a timeline of the men's lives. Once U.S. authorities confronted Peter with the evidence gathered from parallel investigations, he provided the passphrase to investigators. Mark refused to cooperate. When the drives were unlocked, it was blankly apparent to investigators Mark and Peter brought Adam into their lives for exclusive purpose of exploiting him among the lovers network. Police found chat logs between Mark Peters and a New Zealand man in which they bragged about how they had been essaying Adam since he was little. They also bragged they had given him to several other men around the world first, including two American men who were being investigated by police. One of these men was an American lawyer from New Jersey named Edward Desir. One chat, the lawyer states, Redneck parents are more careless with their kids, that he loved child talent shows, and that some parents will do anything to make their kids famous. The lawyer put on another chat. Best are the guys who have kids of their own to share, stating that there is a network of those guys, but that it is hard to get into that club without a kid. Desir regularly viewed and shared child pee from the kitchen of his home sometimes leaving his computer running overnight so that the child P files he had selected using the file sharing program could finish downloading while he slept, even though he was a married man with children. Their online communication also showed that Peter personally arranged for D-Share to access Adam for on multiple occasions in Australia, America, and Brussels from when Adam was as young as four years old. Police alleged to share, paid for Peter, Marks, and Adams' travel expenses. The police obtained video and photographs documenting a trip allegedly funded by Desir to New York, where Adam watches the Lion King musical on Broadway and has lunch at the rotating high-rise restaurant. Adam is later photographed sitting on Desir's lap while Desir drinks a martini in exchange for paying travel expenses and entertaining Mark and Peter. Desir was given Adam for Basically, these two men did not work. Their whole career was about their child and selling the images that they made. Another man involved with the ring was Daniel Meyer, who lived with Peter and Mark for two years before they were charged. He was a child care center manager. Meyer was living in the northern north southwest town of Grafton when he met Peter and Mark online through the photo sharing service Flickr, and they invited him to live with him in 2009. Meyer idolized Mark and Peter because they were a gay couple who were successful. They had an adopted son and a relationship that Meyer aspired to obtain. Another man from Florida who was a 38-year-old attorney named John Rex Powell would often travel to the couple's home in order to essay Adam. Video evidence obtained by authorities allegedly showed Mark, Peter, Powell, the boy and another man, Jason Beto, a tennis coach from Illinois, visiting San Francisco Zoo and later Powell essaying the boy on a hotel bed alongside the child stuffed animals. Another man named Mark Lawless from Tyler, Texas is also part of the ring. Before the arrest, Peter and Mark had planned to adopt a second child by paying a Malaysian surrogate 100000 On Friday, June 28, 2013, Mark Newton was sentenced to 40 years in prison in a U.S. court after pleading guilty to conspiring to exploiting a child and for conspiring to possess child P. Peter Tarong also pleaded guilty for his crimes and was sentenced to 30 years jail. The judge in the case stated she didn't want to put the trial by a jury because she felt the evidence was too awful for people to witness. When Adam was first rescued, medical staff who examined him said the then six-year-old was suffering a trauma level of 10 out of 10. But today, he's said to be doing well. He's living with family in the U.S. and receiving lots of love and therapy. By this time, he should be a teenager, and I hope Adam is living a happy life. I wish all the love and blessings to him in the world. I mean, I can't even imagine what Adam went through. I was actually essayed as a child when I was around six, seven years old by a neighbor 
But what he went through was a lot more than I went through. And it took me a lot to get over that trauma. Years and years to get over that trauma. I mean, you never completely recover, but I can't even imagine how he could be recovering from from this. The people that you love so much betraying you like that. Betraying you and then giving you to other men that betrayed you. Oh, just awful. I do pray for this teenager as it becomes a man. I can't imagine the scars he must have. And I pray that he completely heals over what was done to him. All right, guys, on a positive note, I am so excited. We have our old house completely torn and all the debris is removed and they will be starting on my new home soon. If some of you don't know, my house was basically torn to shreds in a tornado in April. I actually have a video of that encounter on my channel if you want to hear what a tornado sounds like, if you can actually hear it over my screens. It is actually a terrifying video. Well, I've had people say it was very terrifying, and it was especially terrifying for me because I am in it. So if you'd like to watch that. Also, I bought me a new fancy microphone with my first paycheck from YouTube. I finally got a paycheck. It was so exciting getting my first paycheck. I owe it all to you guys for supporting my channel and for the special subscribers that always give me a super thanks tip. Without you guys, I wouldn't be getting a new microphone for my channel. Hope it sounds good. It comes in on June 9th. Thank you guys. You know I love y'all. Well, enough of my rambling. I will let y'all say bye to Simon. And as always, you know I love y'all. I believe I truly do have the best subscribers, and I'm not just saying that. You people have the best hearts. I can just tell from all the wonderful comments I receive. And I love y'all, and thank y'all for supporting me. Bye. And here is Simo to tell y'all bye. The only thing, I got a taller desk, and it's harder to see the little guy. Here he is, though. He tells y'all bye, and he absolutely loves y'all to the fullest. He don't feel good today. He wouldn't eat his breakfast, and I don't know what's going on with him. He's sick of his stomach. That's why he's not very active today. Just not very exciting boy today. Oh, your bubba. You just don't feel good. Oh, your bubba. No, you don't. He's a good boy most of the time. I know. You're a wonderful boy. You two are. You two are. He don't feel good. All right. See y'all. See y'all in a few days. Bye. Dance. 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 Yeah. You can see that look in my eye. Ain't gonna stop anytime soon. Wrote a whole new book while I cry. Me and my